the startup, nothing particular in there. It's exactly similar as the stream example that was explained in the previous video. The view, really there's nothing uh, new there either, very similar to the stream example as well. Uh, there is one thing, however, and that's this observer thing. The uh, console output that is responsible for printing messages now implements an interface output handler and the output handler is defined in the net package. Right? So the console output class in the view implements the interface output handler defined in the net package. So implements symbolized by this dashed arrow. So now we can see that console output which stays in the view implements the output handler interface in the net. So that means that when other classes in the net package want to inform the view about something they just make a method called to an object that implements the output handler. The uh, class here in the net package does not know anything about the console output in the view, but only makes a local call inside the net package to something implemented the output handler. That something is, in effect, the object of the console output class in the view. That way, this class in the net package can call this object without any reference to anything in the view package. And we can see that, in fact, if we look in the net package. In server connection. There is no importing anything from the view. In fact, it only imports, th imports things from the common package. So that's great. That way we have avoided up calls, uh, which tends to make things a bit messy. So with up calls, we have calls from view to controller to net and from net to controller to view. It makes th things messier. Of course, we can do it that way also using plain up calls, but uh, this way we avoid them. We only have dependencies downwards. This is the controller. Because there is really no dependency from net to view or net to controller or controller to view. So that makes the program easier to understand and easier to maintain. At, at first, of course, it's a bit difficult to grasp this uh, observer thing, but once you get it, it's, um, it simplifies programming quite a lot. So the uh, object of the console output class is passed to the connect method in, in the controller here and passed on to the server connection. And the, then the output handler can be used whenever the server connection in the net layer wants to inform the view that some event has happened that the message should be displayed. And it's used already here. When the connection is established, the controller calls the handle message method in the output handler, which is the one that prints to the console. Okay, so that's the only thing that's different in this view from the stream example that was covered uh, previously in the course. While we are in the controller, Let's have a look at that one. Actually, there's no much difference here from the streams example. The threading is handled in the controller. That's kind of what motivates the existence of the controller. And again, we use the completable future, which, for example, has the method run async that executes a runnable on the built-in thread pool, the fork join pool dot common pool. When that uh, task has been executed, which contains this single method, the task submitted to then run is executed, which will call handle message on the output handler. If you are unsure about this lambda expression syntax of Java, then you might repeat the streams example where that is explained. Also the send username that is used to send set the username of, of this user and the send message that is used to send an entry in the conversation. They also use the completable future class and submits runnables to the built-in thread pool. So what's left then to explain on the client side is the actual communication which is in the net layer in the server connection. This class contains all communication. First there's the connect method that establishes the connection with the server. So the connection is established with the server on this host and this port and this broadcast handler as explained previously will be used for feedback messages to the view. First a new socket is created but it is not bound to any address and there is no connection. That the connection is established here on the uh, this line. So the connect call will block until the connection is established. 
and we are connecting to uh, this address. So an object of the class javanet inet socket address represents an IP address and a port. And we set the timeout for the connection attempt. If connection is not established within this time, the connection attempt is aborted. So half minute is defined here, it's in milliseconds. Then this method connect returns and the connection is established. Then we set the timeout for communication on the socket. If nothing happens within half an hour, the connection is aborted. So the half hour is also defined up here. Now we set this object state to connected. It's the boolean up here. And it's used to know whether this object holds an active connection or not. We set auto flush to true here and then used here. So this variable is just to give a name to the true value here, which is good praxis. If I had written instead of auto flush here, I had written true would not be clear what that true meant but now we can see that it means out of flush this stream is out of flush which means that whenever there is a call to the print line method of this print writer the uh, stream is flushed and everything is actually sent so this print writer wraps the output stream of the socket so whatever is written to the print writer will be sent to the server over the network we also retrieve the input stream of the socket that receives messages from the server and uh, as usual we wrap it in an input stream reader that translates to the character based API and wrap that one in the buffered reader that can handle more characters at the same time and also provides the read line method that reads an entire line. The last thing of the connect method is to start a receiving thread. This thread that is started here and that executes the run method of this runnable listens for incoming messages from the server. We must always have an active listener listening for in incoming requests. We cannot know when there will be message received from the server. Therefore, there must be a thread that always listens for messages. So we have the UI and we have a thread, let's call it E1, that receives events from the keyboard. When the user types on the keyboard, the thread T1 will be notified and read that, as was the case in the streams example also. Then T1 will call the controller. If, for example, the task is to connect, the connect method is called in the controller. Then in the method in the controller, a task is submitted to the fork join pool by the completable future class, as we have seen previously here, here, here. Here. So that means we have the pool which contains a number of threads and one of those is allocated, let's call it T2. It's the one that performs the task submitted in the controller method and it will call the uh, server connection class which is the one we are currently looking at. Executes the method in the server connection and then returns to the thread pool and is again ready for accepting more tasks. So note that things can be done in the network communication by the thread T2 at the same time that the thread T1 is accepting input from the keyboard. So therefore the user will not experience the application to be blocked. But then we also have this listening thread here. So that's yet another thread, let's call it T3, which continuously listens on the socket for messages. It reads from the socket and handles that data by sending it to the appropriate output handler, this one, that is sent to the thread there. So the thread T3 sends the data to the output handler by calling the handle message method in the output handler, then goes back to accept another message from the server. What is sent to the output handler is shown on the screen, because the output handler contains the system out print line message that prints on the screen. Just to clarify the communication. Here is the server and communication is done from here. The thread T2 sends data and establishes connections and disconnects and the server sends data that is read by the thread T3. So this is what really happens. Okay, let's look at the uh, listening thread. The listening thread stores the output handler. Here is the run loop. So it really uh, executes only this single line again and again. It reads data from server was the stream that was connected to the socket so reads data that was sent by the server calls extract message body which is down here which is just some amount of string parsing that extracts the message that was sent by the server 
and then calls handle message that just does a system out print line to show the message on the screen system out print line since the print line method puts the cursor on the new line it's like the prompt is not there anymore so therefore it again prints the prompt right so then we are done with the listener that receives incoming messages so let's look at sending a message so there are two public methods for sending messages and one private helper method so the two public methods are send username which is used to set the username of this client and send chat entry which is used to broadcast uh, and entering the chat conversation. They both call the private send message method and they both pass the a string containing the command name and the message being sent. So the message of the send username is the new username of this user and the message body of send chat entry is the, this message that is being broadcast. So then let's look at the private send msg method here. This syntax means that there can be any number of string arguments they are stored like in an array of, of strings so in this case there are two message type and the actual message body so then they are joined the message is created using the string joiner class and the, the string joiner will concatenate a sequence of strings. So uh, the delimiter between the concatenated strings is this that is passed to the string joiner constructor and it's the message delimer delimiter defined in the constants class which contain constants used on both client and server side. So the delimiter is the double hash as explained previously. All uh, strings that are passed to the add method of the joiner are concatenated and they are separated by the double hash. Then eventually we send this message to the server. So then there's only one method left and that is the disconnect method here. It sends the disconnect message and note that now there is only one parameter in the call to send msg but down here there were two parameters that can work since we used the dot notation of the send msg method here. The disconnect message is sent to the server and that is to inform the server that this user is now leaving the conversation. Then the socket is closed, the object is set to null so it can be garbage collected and the status is set to not connected. So what about the listening thread? Well when the socket is closed here the read line method here will return with an exception which means we will leave the for loop and enter the catch block and if we are still connected an error message is printed to the well error message the user is informed that the connection was lost so in this case will the message be printed or not well it will most likely not be printed because uh, this thread executing here will continue to execute setting connected to false before the socket exception is received in the listening thread and the check for the connected variable is done but of course we cannot be sure it might be that we get the error message in some cases if the listening thread executes before this thread has executed setting connected to false the uh, connected variable is handled by two threads. It is written by this thread from the thread pool performing the connect operation Oops. and by this thread also from the thread pool performing the disconnect operation and it is read by this listening thread down here. So when a variable is shared between different threads like that, it should be set to volatile. The keyword volatile informs the JVM that this variable is shared between different threads and therefore it must not be cached locally in the memory of one specific thread, but must be made available to all threads. So that concludes the client.